Lord forgive me for this trap shit Sergeant Smack make it backflip Telly hanged it with the action With the vato speaking Spanish Frank Matthews how I vanish Poof. Came back like I'm King Tut Go BBS is on a beamer When Fat Cat was tearing queens up Fall off the profit not the re Fly like Puerto Rican Jesus Uptown like I'm Baby Man Just caught a touchdown from the bay over the last few years, a lot of people have become aware of the inequities in the criminal justice system. The fact that we spend over $80 billion a year in incarcerating people, oftentimes who've only been engaged in nonviolent drug offenses. Right now, with our overall crime rate and incarceration rate both falling, we're at a moment when some good people in both parties, Republicans and Democrats, and folks all across the country are coming together around ideas to make the system work smarter, make it work better. And I'm determined to do my part wherever I can. That's one of the reasons why I'm commuting the sentences of 46 prisoners who were convicted many years or in some cases decades ago. These men and women were not hardened criminals, but the overwhelming majority had been sentenced to at least 20 years. 14 of them had been sentenced to life for nonviolent drug offenses. So their punishments didn't fit the crime. And if they'd been sentenced under today's laws, nearly all of them would have already served their time. I've made clear to them that re-entering society is gonna require responsibility on their part, and hard work, and smarter choices. But I believe that, at its heart, America is a nation of second chances. And I believe these folks deserve their second chance. I also believe there's a lot more we can do to restore the sense of fairness at the heart of our justice system, and to make sure our tax dollars are well spent, even as we are keeping our streets safe. That's something I'm going to discuss tomorrow in Philadelphia, where I'm going to lay out some ideas for criminal justice reform many of which are already getting bipartisan support. Together, we can make our community safer. We can spend our taxpayer dollars more wisely, and we can make sure that more of our citizens, even those who've made mistakes, have a chance to become productive members of society and contribute to this country that we love. Now, from Louisiana's News Channel, this is 9 News at 5.30. Good afternoon, I'm Elizabeth Fowle. We begin with a 9 News update. New information on the shooting that happened on North Foster Drive Saturday afternoon. A developing news story, two people were hospitalized after a possible shooting on Foster Drive. Baton Rouge police say this happened around 1. According to EMS, at least one victim was critically hurt. We don't have many other details at this point. We'll keep you updated on WAFB.com and later on 9 News at 10. We've now learned the surviving victim was recently released from a federal prison by a presidential pardon. Our Scotty Hunter is here now with more. Yeah, Liz, a source confirms to 9 News that victim is 50-year-old John Boo Milton. Now, here's a picture of Milton, who we're told was serving 50 years in prison and was accused of being the ringleader of a Baton Rouge drug operation between 1992 and 1996. He surrendered in 1996 and was serving his sentence until this past March when President Obama commuted his sentence along with 61 others who had been put away on drug-related charges. Now, the two men were shot at the Hughes Auto Sales on North Foster Street yesterday. The other victim, 42-year-old Drexel Platt, died at a local hospital. Baton Rouge police are in, still investigating the shooting so far. They've not identified a motive or any suspects in the case. Slip. Yo, yo, we back. Shay's pop a lot. Street's gatekeeper. We on our way to Louisiana with it. Baton Rouge, to be exact. I ain't got to say nothing else except for that. Now, today, I'm going to be telling you a story of one of, if not the biggest hustler to come out of the city of Baton Rouge that would be sentenced to a 50-year prison term. Have that prison term cut by more than 30 years by Barack Obama only to be shot and wounded 
in a shooting that seen another man die three months after he was released. And the person that I'm talking about is none other than the legendary John Boo Milton III. Now, if he wasn't the biggest, y'all get in the comment box to let me know who was. And if y'all was around at that time, y'all definitely speak up. Now, according to WRBZ2 or ABC News in the Baton Rouge area, they're going to credit John Boo Milton with being one of the first people to bring the crack house to the area of Baton Rouge. And the federal government would claim that between January of 1993 and August of 1995, Boo Milton participated in a conspiracy to possess with the intent to distribute cocaine. Now, according to Boo Milton's sister, Tangi Milton Williams, she would go on to say that John Boo Milton was actually a good student in high school and he worked a part-time job at a local place called Mr. Ghetto's Pizza Restaurant. From there, he would go on to apply to college and be accepted. Now, according to her, it was right around this time where he would become a father. And like all of us know, that pressure kind of hit a little bit different when you got another mouth to feed. So that forced him to go in certain directions. Even with that pressure he was facing, he continued to work that part-time pizza job, but he would have to put school on hold and he would take up a second job at a local Wendy's and he did some construction, some other work for money. Now, it would be at this time where he would determine that his contributions wasn't really enough and he needed an extra source of income. And that's where he would be introduced to the drug game. And that's where he would really make his mark in the city. Now, the government would assess that his run was from 1993 to 95, but I seen in different outlets where they said it was roughly from 1992 to 1996, where he would turn himself in. And they would attest at this time that he would move roughly around 90 kilograms of powder cocaine that was transported from Houston, Texas to Baton Rouge, Louisiana, where it was sold. Now, it wouldn't be until mid-March of 1996 where Boo Milton, along with three other people, would be indicted for that drug conspiracy. It was said that he didn't turn himself in right away, and it wouldn't be until October of 1996 where he would plead guilty to that conspiracy count. Now, according to his sister, it would be under the advice of their selected attorney that she would suggest him turning himself into authorities where she would try to work out some deal for him being that he had no criminal history and it was just allegations of drug possession and distribution so apparently it sounds like the government didn't find any drugs and it didn't mention any case of money following the advice of his attorney he did turn himself in and eventually ended up pleading guilty now, according to his sister, they were in constant contact with his attorney at this time, where she would state that they had agreed with the district attorney for a 15 year sentence if he would plead guilty and accept all his responsibility and his involvement with the drug operation, saying that wasn't the best news. But at that time, they had to roll with the punches. He would eventually go to court for sentencing where the judge would essentially deny that 15 year agreement and go on to sentence him to 50 years in prison. Now, after hearing all the facts, that was really striking to me that he didn't have any criminal history and he got slapped with one of the harshest penalties almost that I've heard of as far as a drug case that didn't have any violence considered with it. But I did see in his case where at sentencing, the district court found that he would ask one of his co-conspirators to sign a false affidavit that would exonerate him from all his wrongdoing in the conspiracy. And they would consider that a obstruction of justice and they would recommend a two point enhancement on his sentence. They would go on to add another point enhancement because they determined that he didn't provide all the proper financial information to his probation officer. So you could imagine he was facing anywhere from 360 months to life and he would end up being sentenced to 600 months. Now, lucky for Boo Milton, Barack Obama was elected president. And in March of 2016, he would go on to commute his sentence as well as 60 other people 
mainly people involved in drug conspiracies that didn't contain violence. Now, normally the story would end like that and it would be a happy tale. But only three months after he was released by Barack Obama on that presidential pardon, he would end up being involved in a shooting that happened around 1 p.m. on the 1800 block of North Forster Drive. He would be shot and treated for life-threatening injuries, but a 42-year-old man by the name of Drexel Platt that was also with him would end up being shot and died from his gunshot wounds. So it's like one of those sayings, once you win the game, you win the game for life. Now, we hope Boo Milton is doing his thing. If anybody got lines to him, tell him to get with us. We definitely want to chop it up with him. Y'all make sure y'all follow me on Instagram, on Twitter, P-O-P underscore A underscore L-O-T. Y'all hit the red subscribe button right under this video so y'all know when this real trill spill shit is dropping. And y'all get in the comment box. Let me know where we need to go, what cities we haven't been to, what gangsters we need to cover, what we got wrong, all of that. It's your boy Popalot. Mob gang.